I ask Facebook, what happens if somebody reports something? Uh, I'm saying Facebook because Facebook has swallowed up Instagram right, right. now. So, so it's, it's like the, the same, same company. Yeah. And they're like, well, when somebody reports, it goes to one of 15,000 people we have worldwide. Wow. Uh, human beings. So that's not an algorithm. Okay. It's a human being who's like looking at the report and say, okay, this person has been reported. What's the merit of this? Now I said, wait, when well, you have 15,000 people, so isn't it, it doesn't it depend on who it falls to? They're like, no, because they don't make independent decisions. They have a decision tree. Okay. And so they're like, if there is a, nip, a nipple, is it a male nipple? Then it's okay. It's a female nipple. It's not okay. Blah, 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 blah. They go through the whole. And rubble. then does it go up a level to somebody above them and then they no. make a decision? No. No. They make the decision. So I said. So, so the individual person does make the decision. But based on a common policy. So they, okay. they, uh, what Instagram and Facebook told me is that they are highly trained. I'm like, who trains them? And they're like, well, we have a training program. And they also there is an oversight program. I said, okay, so who trains the oversight people and who trains these people? And they're like, well, we have a committee here in Palo Alto where we come up with the training materials. And then I asked, who is in that committee? Are there ethicists in that committee? Is it just engineers? And they're like, well, I'll get back to you on that. Mm. So when you go back and you say, okay, how are these decisions? Why is a male nipple okay and a female nipple is not okay? Right. Who is making that decisions? Right. They freeze if you ask that question. But the thing is too is that people's accounts will get deleted. I mean I know girls that are so careful about what they post and they are not posting nipples. They are – I mean I know the girls that are even afraid to post cleavage, not posting anything inappropriate and they still get deleted. I mean I know girls who've had pictures of like their dogs deleted. Well, imagine this scenario. You're one of these 15,000 people. Right. You have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And you probably know that you have a lot of power. And let's say you're a religious fanatic or you have a close friend who's a religious fanatic and you tell them, look, I'm going to tell you what you need to do if you want somebody like deleted for good. Mm -hmm. And if you couple that with people who are like, I know the inside track to get the account put back up. Mm -hmm. So either people reverse engineer the processes that. Facebook and Instagram have set up Mm -hmm. or straight up they have corruption in the system. And when I ask what is the likelihood that there is corruption in your system, her answer was um, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be happening. But how easy that would be to set up. Extremely. So easy because you could have a deal with some – if you're one of these people who gets to decide what account should be deleted, you could easily make deals with people say, okay, you know, you you can't – you campaign them. You say, give me $400. I'll put your account back up and you guys split it. I well, mean, and also in moral terms, in ethical terms, when right. you do the lowest common denominator theory, like right. let's just lower this down to the easiest thing, then you end up with surreal, bizarre things like the latest F8 uh, conference where Facebook presents their products and mm-hmm. their. Th- the one that happened last month, they had this French woman step in and say, oh, we. We now are going to have a crush system. You're going to figure out who's your crush. So they're talking about sexuality and human connections at the level of a 12-year-old from 1962. Wow. You know, it's like yeah. – and you hear this woman and you're like, who are you talking to? Yeah. Like who is your demographic right now? Right. And the problem is, is that this whole kind of bias and stigma – against um, adult industry people and sex workers is like the last acceptable bias to have. Correct. Because if something like this was happening to like people of Correct. color or Correct. anything like that, um, pe- you know, maybe different gender identifications or um, it, it would be, you know, obviously horrific and it would, and it would be, um, and people take notice of that, but it's, you know, it's like, if you're a sex worker, then like you have no support. No, and the only nobody support, wants to fight for you. No, and that's why it's great that there are organizations like the Sex Workers Outreach Project uh-huh. or or activists, and and Twitter is a great platform because Twitter right now is as as the Wild West, and so right. you can actually Twitter because the owner creator of Twitter is such a complex guy that mm-hmm. Jack guy is very very complex. Zuckerberg is not complex at all, mm. uh, but um. Jack from Twitter definitely is somebody who's allowing a lot of conversations to happen in there. 
Mm -hmm. All sides. And so it's great that people can actually have these conversations. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.